Good Happy morning. Eastern to all of you. Welcome to our Sunday <clears throat> uh, meeting. I will read a passage from Happy Life. If one of you one of you projects has failed, if one of your projects has failed, don't get upset or give up. Apparent failures are the means by which God teaches you to correct your approach, enabling you to repeat the experience all the wiser. A person who refuses to try again on account of a past failure doesn't deserve to enjoy the sweet taste of success. The art of starting over is the measure of greatness for those who aspire to even greater accomplishments. No one enjoys victory without having experienced previous defeats. Life is a success, succession of lessons that must be repeated until properly learned. Our dear Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us one, once more time to be here together with the purpose of learning, being edified. And thank you for allowing us to celebrate this beautiful Easter Sunday. May we keep the teachings our friend Jesus in our hearts, in our spirits, in order for us to continue in this beautiful path of progress. May we continue with the certainty that you're there for us, that you, your son is for us, and thank you for all our mentors and guides for everything they do for us. With this in mind, Father, we ask your permission for us to start our Sunday meeting in the name of him, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Can we pause the music here? Is it okay? Is it? There. <laughs> see if I go here so you can see. Good morning, everyone. It's Easter. Look at everybody here. Happy faces, smiling. Come on, you can do it. At home, too, if you're listening to us and watching this wherever you are. It could be Easter or not, but you know what? Easter is every day. It's the life of Jesus in our heart and following him and his teachings. So happy Easter whenever, whenever you're watching this. And since it's Easter here, I chose this topic. And I know we talk about Jesus in other uh, Christian religions and in Christianity. I talk, we talk about Jesus, the resurrection, you know, his life. But we have a little different approach and we respect and would love to talk more about this. But today I thought, this week actually, let's talk about something else. And I chose the topic, Jesus, the Lamb. So let's think about it. Imagine that cute lamb. I'm not talking about a, an adult sheep, right? Those are cute. Imagine like one year old. Have that image as we were talking about this. But before we talk about the lamb, I was wondering, what do you know about Easter? Besides the religious and the Christian part of it, where does this word come from? Maybe some of you already know. Good, we just check. 
If you don't know, you can Google. And I thought, hey, let's find out. I didn't know. I know that Easter we celebrate the birth, fertility, you know, it's the spring. But then I went online and I find out the origin has to do with this goddess, Ostera. Did you know that? Anybody knew? No, me neither. That's what it was. So it was a goddess, and look at the name. Oh, is it too small? Estra, <laughs> if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Or Ostera is a West German, Germanic spring goddess. And look where the word come from, if you say Easter. Estra. <laughs> so it's that. Ostera celebrates the spring equinox. Astra represents spring and new beginnings. At the time of equinox, the feast is celebrating her honor, replaced with offerings of rabbit shaped cakes and colored eggs. So, hmm, this is where they come from. I got it. They used to, I was reading more about her. There's so much information online. They used to bake. Uh, bread in the shape of a bunny. You can make some bunny rolls and offer to her because this, this is the beginning of the spring and they wanted all, you know, the flowers, the birth, all. Oh, we've got one more friend here. <laughs> Welcome. So, they adopted the, the hair and the egg as her symbols. That's where it comes from. It has nothing to do with Jesus, <laughs> with the religion. That. So what does it represent? It's a time for balance, renewal, fertility, rebirth, <laughs> beginning new projects, spring, spring cleaning. It's a new, it's a rebirth. So I invite you today because we are in the spring and Easter, or rebirth, a new you. What does a new you look like? What do you want that's new in your life? Right, this Easter. And then I go, okay, I got it. I got it. What about the chocolate eggs? Because it's confusing, the bunnies, do bunnies lay eggs? You know, it's confusing for kids, right? Well, it's like, it's all about marketing. <laughs> and of course, in Europe, they made the first chocolate eggs, and then it became a thing. So, when we think about Chris, uh, Chris no, oh my gosh, I think because of Jesus, Easter, and I'm a teacher, we think, oh, bunnies, let's, have some bunnies, right? Has to do with spring. And we forgot another important symbol, the lamb. When you celebrate Easter, do you have any lamb picture in your house? Do you do anything that has to do with lamb? No, what do we have? If you have children, all right? Or if you go to the store, it's all about Easter Bunny. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? No, no, no criticism. My, my mother too. I teach and I do Easter Bunnies. By the way, you cannot talk about any religious things at school or you get in trouble. So we do talk about the bunny and Easter eggs. So today I invite you to put the Easter Bunny to the side the chocolate eggs, and let's focus on the lamb. All right, I go, oh, the lamb. And I was raised Catholic, and I, it was an excellent foundation in my life. I'm so grateful for being raised Catholic. I went to the mass, I did all the things you imagine, right, to my later 20s and to start questioning a lot of things, and I always, and I don't know how to say in English, but it's like Christ is, Tom can help me, the Lamb of, what do you say? The, the Lamb of God, right? 
was like, but where does this lamb come from? So it comes from, let's just start with the Old Testament. And I would do a little bit of a history before we go into more into Easter. So if you know the story of Moses in Exodus and Moses, he is the one known as the author of the Old Testament. Some people may question, but let's just go to the story. And one thing, when we think about the Bible, Old and New Testament, make sure that you don't take everything literal. There is a lot of metaphors, allegoric. Even when we're listening to Jesus' stories, it may not make sense, right? Until we, we are able to understand a little bit more. So Moses, in his 80s, he wanted to free his people. So he went to the Pharaoh and said, let my people go. I'm doing the short version, okay? You just go and read. <laughs> and they said, no. and he said to Pharaoh, nope. You know, the Israelites, well, they were the, the slaves, but they had the life serving, you know, Egyptians. And, but Moses, he received from God a message that it's time to free them, to free my people. So we went, he went to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, you're not doing this. And if you go to the Old Testament, it says, the Pharaoh, he will not listen to you. Then look at, look, this is the voice of God, according to Moses. And at that time, he was a God that was mean, the God that was strong, right? So they feared God, but loved God too, because God was also able to help them and do wonderful things. So according to Moses, God said, then I will lay my hand on Egypt and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, these Israelites, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring these realites out of it. So according to the story, God was warning the Pharaoh. Okay, I'm gonna give you a chance. Nope, I will not let it go. Oh, then I'm gonna send you a plague. And he kept going. I'll send another one. I'll send another one. I'll send another one until it's so bad that you definitely let my people go. Kept threatening, right? So here are the 10 plagues. Pretty nasty. Water turns to blood, frogs, lice, gnats, flies, disease on livestock. Unhealable boils. Has anybody ever had the boil? It is painful. Hail and fire, locusts, darkness. And that's right, what kind of God? But just saying, hey, Moses, my God, our he, Moses God, is gonna take care of, of us. And the Pharaoh was like, what kind of God is yours? That's so powerful. They can do all kinds of things. Again, when you read this, you know, with a grain of salt. And that's when it comes the lamb. I told you all this to get to the number 10. The 10th, the plague, the 10th plague. So he went there. Pharaoh, we've been talking about this. My God already showed you everything that's going to happen. It has happened, how powerful God is. And this is your last chance to let my people go. Free the Israelites and we don't want to be slaves anymore. He said, mm -mm, not yet. And here's the 10th plague. Then Moses said, this is what the Lord says, about midnight I will go out among the Egyptians. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. 
from the firstborn of Pharaoh who rules the lands to the firstborn children of female slaves who use their hand mills, including every firstborn domestic animal. Pretty intense. There will be loud crying throughout Egypt, such as there has been or ever will be again. All right, I'm trying to scare you. God will never do this to us, okay? <laughs> this is the story, but that happened according to the Old Testament. All those kids, the firstborn, died. And then Moses, he wanted to protect his people. And he said, what do I do, right? And here's what God told Moses to do. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. There is more about this. It's just got the the most important. The animals you choose must be your old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Guys, the Old Testament is bloody. Right? And now you wonder why Kardec just told, just told, to talk about the New Testament, telling this to a kid. It's so much death, killing. <laughs> but I'm just sharing with all the grown-ups here. Um, so they did. And the thing is, imagine, every family there, um, the Israelites, they got a lamb. I'm not talking a big sheep. Have you seen how cute a lamb is? And they say, you get the first day, you, you, you get it, and you take care of that lamb for 14 days, two weeks. You're going to be attached to that thing. Is this a cute thing? Oh, look at the lamb. Like you're having a puppy. You take care of the puppy. You know, and then on the 14th day, you have to kill it out. Teaching about detachment, but they did. And then according, they got the blood and put on the door. It's like, come on, Bernadette, it's Easter. You're telling all those horrible things today, but... One thing that we study, we learn in Spiritism is the importance of studying, of reading books, of getting more knowledge about what topic is. So they took the blood and put on the sides of the doors. And according to the story, the angel of death passed by the door, passed by the house, passed over and didn't kill any of the newborns. By the way, a pause here, Brazilians. Sorry, we don't have this book in English yet. It's a wonderful book. It's in Portuguese only, The Pharaoh of Mernefta, Mernefta. And it's one of the reincarnations of Rochester, and he lived at the time of Moses. And it's amazing. You learn so much about it in the story. Pause. Now again. And that's where the word for the Jewish people comes from, Easter. They don't call Easter. They call Passover. Why? Because the angel of death, death passed over the house and kept going. So what do they do? This is, and, and that's one of the reasons how Moses' people were able to free themselves from slavery. And you know the story, the, the sea, and whatever happened. In that book, you know all the details. And then it became uh, a religious um, celebration. So 
Jewish people celebrate their Easter that they call Passover to celebrate, here it says, um, let's just read, Passover in Ju Judaism, holiday commemorating the Hebrews' liberation from slavery in Egypt and the passing over of the forces of destruction or the sparing of the firstborn of the Israelites when the Lord smote the land of Egypt. So, that's where we get the lamb. So the lamb means sacrifice. Well, imagine every Easter, every Easter, every Passover at that time, because they were now celebrating this every year. The whole, every family getting a lamb to sacrifice. You know, the first thing that I thought was the turkeys. It came to my mind. The Thanksgiving, we all eat turkeys. And I imagine, you know, raising, growing them so we can have that. But here, that was a thing that they used to do. When Jesus went to the temple and he was really they, even angry, upset about what they saw there, it just... In the history, it says there was so much blood down the street from the sacrifice, from the road. And every time, let's get a lamb and sacrifice. So, they lived in a sacrificial system. It was the lamb. And they considered the lamb as the mediator between God and man. So, was, what was a good thing about the time, about this? There was one good thing. They realized that they sin, sin in the sense of making mistakes. That's all the word sin means, making a mistake. And they said, okay, I recognize I need to redeem myself, but what do I do? So they believed they, all they had to do is to get a lamb and sacrifice and done. Isn't it easy? Right? I just heard Sophia. I just did horrible things to Sophia. I'm feeling horrible. So instead of going to Sophia, talking to Sophia, so don't, no worry, I'm just going to go get a chicken in the market and sacrifice <laughs> and made an offering to God and I'm okay. We have to be careful. Sometimes we act like that, like the lamb. We blame somebody who wants something or someone to solve the problems for us. Right? When solve our problems, for example, when we say, when we ask, we have a problem with somebody and we want a forgiveness. If we say to the person, please, Flavia, can you forgive me? It's so easy. What did I do? I put all the burden on her. I hurt you, but it's your job to forgive me. How easy. Instead of, Flavia, I want to apologize because I did something not nice to you and I need to work things out with you. I, no, it's your job. I messed up, but you have the responsibility to forgive me, the lamb. Do you see the lamb again? You want something else to do the job for you? Well, that's the society that they lived. They had the awareness of their mistakes, but they sacrificed the animal for redemption. How many? Millions and millions of lambs killed just for that. So, let's talk about the lamb again. <laughs> Everybody's just like, now the good part about it, right? The representation, the symbolism. The lamb is the symbol of Easter. Because it's innocence, gentleness, detachment. 
So instead of thinking of those horrible things and the sacrifice and the blood, let's focus on the cute thing about a lamb. How gentle can we be like lambs, gentle towards each other, kind, even innocent sometimes. And they say that Jesus was just like that too. Right? See, it's believed that the lamb symbolizes Jesus as embodies purity and goodness, but also represents sacrifice. A life here on earth requires a lot of sacrifice. Sacrifice to get better, sacrifice at work, sacrifice dealing with whatever our monsters that we carry in our head or inside, right? Our, oh gosh, we have so much going on. But let's not forget that we're also wonderful people, that we work really hard, that every day is a new day, is a renewal. That's what Easter it is, it's a new person. So let's do that. Let's think about the lamb that although I sacrificed, but I have a beauty in me. I have this gentleness in me. And at the story, because of the sacrifice of the lamb, they connect that with Jesus. And you know, when Jesus was being, you know, killed on the cross, it was the same time the people were celebrating the Passover. They were at the temples doing all the sacrifice. <laughs> that celebration. So, you are all so serious because of the story. Let's smile. It's like, I know it's kind of bloody, but... But let's do some reflection. It's almost there, just two more slides. Oh, we're good. We say that Jesus, many say that Jesus came to save us and he died on the cross to save us from our sins. And if you think like that, we totally respect, we're not here to judge. But the reality is that Jesus came here to show us the way. <laughs> if you just say, all I have to do is accept Jesus in my heart and I continue being mean to people, that's the lamb. Can you see the relation? It's just the lamb. Hey, Jesus became the lamb now. But he came to show the way of self-salvation. I was, we were just talking about this yesterday with my husband when we were reading, doing the gospel at home. So Jesus came to show the way. And I said, but can he save you? If we follow his teachings and we work on ourselves, yes. But save us like in the sense of new life, a better person. Because we are responsible for our own mistakes. So how many times we are getting that lamb in our lives? Oh, that made me do it. We have excuse or want somebody to solve our problems. But Jesus said, hey, I'm here for you. And what I love about this, because I want you to see yourself right here. This is who you are. Imagine Jesus right now hugging you, holding you. In the moments that you were scared, in the moments that you were sad, did you just know what to do? You become the little lamb of all the troubles but also you are gentle, you are amazing, you are innocent. So think about Jesus hugging you and holding you, and he knew it. Because his sacrifice was not to die on the cross, but, living, but to live among us in the flesh. Why? Well, Jesus knew that there was the afterlife. 
even though he was human and had pain, he was not afraid of death. He knew. The greatest sacrifice was to reincarnate on earth. Jesus was the Christ. He had achieved the enlightenment. And then he had to dim his light to come here and deal with us. And he knew our limitations and everything, and he was there. He came to give us the example. So, to conclude, Easter. For Spiritists, Easter, like any other time of the year, should be a time for reflection. Study and reaffirming our commitment to Jesus' teachings so that everyone can realize within themselves and in the world in which they live the kingdom of peace and love that he exemplified. So let's think about that. Let's start thinking about Easter in a different way. Maybe it's time to have talk more about lamb instead of Easter bunny. But we still can celebrate and do your thing, right? Moderation. And let's start today this rebirth, this new person. And see the lamb of symbol of sacrifice, a symbol of gentleness, a symbol of innocence. And always think of the Lamb, not only as Jesus, but also sometimes we are the Lamb. They just need to be held because we are never alone. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>